I want to talk about having a scarcity mindset today. Here on YouTube, those of us that are involved in the financial community or the FIRE community, we constantly talk about ways that our viewers can better their financial situation or how they can retire early or how they can be an investor or a better investor or to grow their money through investing and things like that. But we rarely talk about why people are in the financial situations that they're in and how they can overcome these financial situations. I know myself personally, I've always been a great saver, but there were times when I didn't believe that I could be wealthy or that I could be one of those people that would have a lot of money. So today I want to talk about a scarcity mindset and some things that create the scarcity mindset and how we can overcome a scarcity mindset. Before we get into the video, if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to hit the like button because it does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you find this information helpful or maybe you even know someone who needs to hear this information, please be so kind to share the video. So when we're talking about a scarcity mindset, we're talking about someone who may live paycheck to paycheck or they may spend money as soon as it hits their hand or their account or someone who is afraid to spend money. Those are traits of someone experiencing a scarcity mindset. Now, even though a person may have a scarcity mindset, they will find themselves always focusing on not having enough. Now, in order to overcome a scarcity mindset, you have to have an abundance mindset. And an abundance mindset keeps in mind every possible favorable outcome for your financial situation while allowing you to be open to each one. The fear of spending or never making enough, it doesn't exist because it is not an option. It is not something that you think about. You think about living in prosperity and abundance and having a endless amount of wealth. You dream and you envision yourself becoming wealthy or as some people will say in a spiritual sense, your cup is overflowing. Now, I want to go over today a few ways that people can shift their mindset from scarcity to abundance. I have a list here of four ways that you can overcome a scarcity mindset and gain an abundance mindset. So tip number one is money needs direction. And what I mean by that is most people may know this as having a budget or a financial plan a budget is just basically you telling your money where to go for a defined period of time a good rule of thumb is to start with at least one year so that you create the habit of budgeting and you create the ha habit of evaluating your spending and telling your money where to go there is a saying that says if you fail to plan then plan to fail and what that means is, guys, you have to have a plan with your money. You have to have a plan for where you're going to spend your money, how you're going to spend your money, and what you're going to do with your money. That's very important is money needs a direction. Now, personal budgets are extremely useful in managing an individual or a family's finances over both a short period of time and a long period of time. From a practical standpoint, this makes sense. If you don't have a plan for your money, then you'll never really shift your financial situation. You'll never get out of that scarcity mindset into an abundance mindset if you don't even know where your money is going. However, the structure of this plan stems from the mindset that your money needs direction and a plan in order to meet your financial goals. So when you set financial goals for yourself, you have to have a plan on how you're going to reach those goals and you want to start that by creating a budget or a financial plan. Now, this is because an abundance mindset asserts the that regardless of our financial pursuits, 
you will always have more than you need to meet your goal. If you don't think that you're going to have enough money to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish financially, then you definitely won't accomplish them. What we think about, we bring about. What we believe, we achieve. So you have to believe that you can achieve your financial goals in order to achieve them. You have to believe that you are financially abundant in order to achieve the things that you set out to achieve financially. Now, last but not least, once you start embodying this mindset, then your financial life flows towards the energy you give it. If you focus on making and having more than enough money, that is what your outcome will be. So again, one of my favorite books, guys, is The Secret. And The Secret talks about the law of attraction. And I think that the law of attraction is very important when we talk about building wealth and achieving financial independence. You got to speak it into existence. You got to put energy towards the things that you want. You got to think about what you want and what you desire, not what you don't want or why you can't have it. So the very first tip around creating an abundance mindset is money needs direction. The second tip is to cut emotional spending. Now, some of you guys may be familiar with emotional spending and what it is, but for those of you who aren't, emotional spending is the act of buying things with the motivation to make us happy or to make us feel better. Emotional spending is a huge issue for many people because it's often driven by our emotions depending on what is happening or going on in our life at that time. Now, some of you may know this to be what is considered retail therapy. It's whenever we're feeling down or we're feeling sad or we're feeling some type of negative emotion, we spend money in order to make us feel better or to get a burst of happiness. Now, when it comes to emotional spending, it's important to keep in mind that there's a difference between compulsive spending and spending money every nine, now and then in order to lift our spirits or to put us in a better place or a better mood. Now, if life isn't moving accordingly to our plan, we can feel powerless amidst the chaos and turn to money in order to make things right. Money represents power, guys. So it's no surprise that many of us use it to ease our pains or to regain a sense of control when life throws us a, a few curveballs. So, you know, I don't think that it's a bad thing if we use money in order to get our spirits up, if we do a little emotional spending or retail therapy every now and then. The thing is that if you know this is something that you like to do when you've had a tough week or a tough month, or it's something that really helps you when you going through a tough period in life it's important that we include this in our budget that we set a little money aside each and every week or each and every month for a little retail therapy or emotional spending now the last thing in regards to this tip is emotional spending and overspending in general will be harder if you don't create barriers that make it physically harder to spend money some of those barriers that you can create is to maybe leave your credit cards or your debit cards at home. Don't go to the mall because you know if you go to the mall, then you're going to buy something. Or maybe you want to just look for some other techniques or some alternatives to how you're going to get yourself in a better mood when life is getting you down or when things get a little bit tough in life. You might want to find some other hobbies that don't require you to spend money to go shopping. Tip number three is money is personal, not relative. What this means is that don't compare your financial situation to the financial situations of others. It's easy to compare your financial situation to those in your family, co-workers, friends, you know, that is so easy to do, but what it does, it, it creates a feeling of lack or envy or jealousy. It just creates sometimes a negative 
feeling towards yourself and the state of your financial situation. Consider your personal financial goals for yourself, not as they should be in relationship to what you see others have or what you see others set as personal financial goals for themselves. You may see someone driving a new car or maybe a family member of yours just bought a new house or maybe they're sending their kids to a private school that you can't afford to send your kids to. Don't base your financial situations off the financial situations of others. You don't know if that person could be going into debt. You don't know, you know, how much that person earns. And maybe you do know what that person earns. And maybe that person can afford to do those things. Make sure that the financial goals that you have for yourself are ones that you value, things that you desire and you actually want to accomplish in life not things that other people are doing and you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to say. Another thing about this is as you compare your situation, it shifts your mindset from being appreciative for what you have to now being insecure about what you don't have. As I said in the last um, tip, don't focus on why you don't have something Focus on the things that you want and how you can get them. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on the things that you want to accomplish financially. Once people understand that money choices reflect deeper values, traumas, and life stories, they may see that a financial need for them is not the same as a financial need for someone else. Um, people spend money and people earn money based on their mindset, how they were brought up and things that they experience in life. The things that people have, the things that people desire, desire that are materialistic could be based on some type of tragedy that they experience in their life. So don't base your financial goals on what others have. Make sure that you're setting financial goals that suit the things that you desire in life. Last about, you know, money is personal and not relative is money is personal and best kept that way to avoid negative shifts that will, you know, affect your financial situation. And I'll tell you guys a quick story. Um, on my job, there was a guy who constantly talked about how much money he made and he constantly bragged about how much money he made and there were people that were jealous of him and basically what they did was they sabotaged him they went behind his back and they told the owners of the company negative things about him because they were jealous of him he was constantly bragging about how much money he had how much money he made the things that he did and people didn't like that so just keep your personal finances personal and be sure that you're not setting goals based on the things that others have, but you're setting goals based on the things that you want to have. Or is what I think is one of the most important tips when we want to change our mindset from scarcity to abundance. And that is change your money script. What this means is a money script is an unconscious belief about money that is rooted in our childhood and ultimately shapes our financial health. If you've ever said to yourself, I'll never be able to afford that or maintain a perspective that you will never be able to be successful or as wealthy as others, then you've encountered a negative money script. Guys, let me tell you, I hear people all the time say, I'm broke, or, you know, I'll, I'll be poor all my life, or, you know, my family was poor, so I was poor. Your mindset about money creates your environment with money. If you think that you're broke, then you're going to always be broke. If you believe that you'll never be rich or wealthy, then guess what? You're never going to be real rich or wealthy. Now... Some of the money scripts that we have are things that we've learned as a child. They're often just partial truths, meaning it may be a 
situation that you're in right now, but it doesn't have to be your forever situation. You may be going through a tough time financially at the moment, but you can turn that around at any time. All you have to do is decide that you're going to do something different when it comes to your financial situation. A lot of times our money scripts are passed down from generation to generation. So you may have heard your parents or your grandparents talk about being poor or not having money or never, you know, being wealthy. And now you adapted that same exact mindset. Um, it's responsible for our financial outcome or our current financial situations. If you see yourself in scarcity, then you may always just spend money because you don't ever see yourself having money. Also, it's typically something that is not something that we think about. We do it without thinking. So if you want to change how you think about money, it's something that you're going to have to be intentional about. You're going to have to focus on what you say and how you think about money if you want to change it. If you have a negative mindset about money, then you're going to have to intentionally have a positive mindset about money. You're going to have to work on it. You're going to have to focus on it and you're going to have to change the way you think if you want to go from thinking negative about money to thinking positive about money. So now, money strips are something that shape our mentality about money. Setting budgeting goals and rewarding ourselves, setting achievable budgeting goals and increasing those goals over time are good ways to change how we think about money. This way, if you don't deprive yourself, nor do you overspend, but you keep track of your money, you stay on track to reaching your financial goals, and then you reward yourself when you reach your financial goals, then how you think about money over time will begin to change. Money scripts are commonly referred to as money blocks. Negative money scripts can have a disastrous effect on our financial situation because what we think affects how we feel, which is it shapes the actions that we take. So if you think that you don't have enough money, then nine out of 10, you're just gonna spend money. You're not gonna you know, be responsible with money. If you think that you're gonna be poor your whole life, then you're not gonna try to become wealthy. You're not gonna try to do the things that help you be successful or reach financial freedom when it comes to money. Last but not least, as you consider changing your finances start with examining your mindset and start with thinking about how you talk about money see if the way you think of money and the way you talk about money is sabotaging yourself even while planning you want to make sure that you're positive about your financial future i hope this information was helpful for those of you who may have been struggling with money for a long time and you want to make sure that 2020 you are better with money you are increasing your money growing your dough and i hope that many of you are planning to achieve financial independence or reach financial independence in 2020. sometimes when we change the way we look at stuff it may be hard at first but if we keep working towards it and we don't give up and the more we educate ourselves on something, the easier it becomes. So just to recap, if you want to leave that scarcity mindset behind in 2019 and gain a mindset of abundance in 2020, you want to make sure that you're giving your money direction, that you cut out emotional spending. You understand that money is personal, not relative, and you want to change the way that you think and you speak about money. Again, I am Marie Brown. This is my channel, Minds in Motion, where we talk about personal finances, investing, and how to become the best version of yourself. If you enjoyed this content and you learned anything from in this video today, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and share this content with someone else who may need to hear this. Thank you so much. You guys have an amazing day.